Welcome back, Glitchers, to episode 19 of Glitch Talk. It was Bitcoin's birthday yesterday, and we wouldn't have Glitch or a whole universe of crypto projects at that if not for BTC. So take a moment to appreciate that you're here and still early. I am Hobie Baker's Ghost, and in this video, I'm going to be providing a comparison of two other Layer 1 projects that have been brought up to me both on Twitter and in the Glitch Telegram. Now, before I start, I want to preface that for me to do a technology comparison really requires Glitch launching their mainnet but I can't speak to see to what I'm seeing on testnet to hopefully pull some analysis for you all. Beyond that, however, I'm going to primarily focus on two things, tokenomics and roadmap. And by the end of this video, I'll let you, the viewer, decide what type of opportunity each one of these blockchains represent for the remainder of 2021. As always, like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget, follow me at Hobie Baker Ghost on Twitter. Let's get started. Glitch is a very different blockchain compared to two other Layer 1 projects, Kadena and Hathor, in some very significant ways. The first is the fact that Glitch uses a DK delegated proof of stake consensus. This means all Glitch tokens are pre-mined and issued during an ICO, which happened via TrustSwap in January earlier this year. As it sits today, the Glitch tokens have a total supply that is fully minted of just under 89 million with no VC tokens left, no additional unlocks, and more than 80% of the tokens in circulation. Now you could call Glitch deflationary because once tokens are taken out of circulation and staked with mainnet, and you have the revenue share vault buying back Glitch tokens on the open market to distribute to validators and stakers as rewards, you'll have a significant supply squeeze and some price discovery as a result. Glitch roadmap shows that as of now, between today and December 31st, there will be a mainnet as well as staking and the glitch exchange where you will experience low fees, no slippage, bottomless liquidity, cross-chain trading, and if there's significant volume as the market is hungry for decentralized exchanges, great revenue share opportunities. Now, conversely, while both Kadena and Hathor use proof of work, and directed acyclic graph or DAGs to allow for scalability. Each of these projects are inflationary and therefore have a low circulating supply. Now I'm going to start by covering Hathor or cash tag HTR and how it's a layer one proof of work blockchain that scales to 200 transactions per second. It was conceived in 2018 with a mainnet launch in January of 2020. And in its white paper, it viewed itself as an alternative as a scalable cryptocurrency. They reference Bitcoin many times in the white paper, but as we've seen the Lightning Network has become more widely utilized and has been able to prove to handle tens of thousands of transactions per second with low fees, I've been struggling a little bit to find where Hathor is looking to fit within the market today. I feel like they originally were looking to be a digital currency and now have to figure out how to pivot as they've not been able to scale to the same level that Lightning has. Now, on the official website, there hasn't been much in the way of news since about a year ago when the token e When we look through that, we see the supply is unlimited through mining with small and decreasing inflation, similar to Bitcoin's four year halvening, except on a yearly schedule, with about 60% of tokens being mined but a small number of those being available on the open market, primarily being held by the treasury advisors and team members, with the treasury seeing the most significant increase over this five-year period. Now, if we look at today, we've got a total supply managed around 895 million, with 218 million of those being in circulation. That's that 25%. Hathor, has their own wallet, as well as a way for you to create your very own token, which requires you to buy and deposit a certain number of HTR tokens. So a bit of a novelty there if you want to show off to known coiners, if you want to give them your own crypto. And of course, miners can gain rewards by mining and holding on to HTR tokens or selling them to cover operating costs. There is a tutorial if you want to create your own token. And if we look at the tokens on the Explorer, 
that people have created or that are part of the network for atomic swaps, you can see lots of interestingly named tokens are on the network. And this is probably a result of being able to give people the opportunity to create their own cryptocurrency. I can go look at statistics. And if this sh shows and goes back to mainnet launch, which if you remember was January of 2020, you have just over 238,000 transactions. Now again, making an assumption here, but if that's about two years worth of history, that's not a lot. As far as launches on Hathor, and this could be a result because there really aren't any applications running today. As far as launches upcoming, the only things I found would be the Anubians NFTs, which has already sold out, as well as the upcoming Hathor Gum launch, which is another NFT project that has aspirations to lean into DeFi as part of the roadmap later next year. And one other thing that is forthcoming is Nile Swap, which is going to be an NFT marketplace coming to Hathor. So most of what I've found regarding the network is NFT related. And knowing that the original use case to scale as a cryptocurrency using proof of work as an alternative to Bitcoin a few years ago, now may be seeing a pivot for the team to a more NFT centric ecosystem. If you have to use HTR to buy NFTs on the network, and these projects and marketplaces do well, you could certainly see some excellent buying pressure similar to what we saw with Solana when they launched Solamas. However, based on the rewards happening, you can kind of see how this schedule over time could introduce around 200 to 250 million more tokens over the next couple of years which could add some sell pressure, even with a higher market cap, may not help the per token value. Lastly, the roadmap does show more design and implementation around the DAG. And the DAG is important because as it gets outside of proof of work, that's going to allow for more scalability and hopefully improve upon the current transaction per second of around 200. They also are looking into cross-chain integrations. So obviously some things on the roadmap to make the, the platform more scalable, but it'll be interesting to see if the NFT play is more what they're going for or if they're going to look into other aspects of providing you know, DeFi or other capabilities. Now, if we take a look at the Hathor price, today it reflects a market cap of around 200 million. And there was a point in time over the last year where it was pushing that 400 million market cap and along with everything else back in May, took a pretty deep dive. Um, so really at this stage, I think if they can deliver on some of the dApps, especially around the NFT projects, absolutely, I could see them hit their all time high again here in the coming months. Now, on to Kadena or hashtag KDA. As mentioned, they are also a proof of work project, but their DAG mechanism has figured out how to scale upwards of 480,000 transactions per second. Their technology is far more complex than HTR. So this is not the video for me to try and go over every piece of it. They've got great content out there where they talk about how they're building their chain. And being a US, US based blockchain, they went with proof of work as it will be more compliant in the eyes of the SEC. Now, if we take a look, um, obviously there's a really great video here, a simple animation if you want to learn more about their chain web and how they have braided, parale uh, parallelized, parallelized. If you want to learn more about Kadena's layer one chain web and how their proof of work consensus mechanism improves upon throughput and scalability, this is a really good video that can be found on their GitHub. As we get into their founder's background, they come from JP Morgan Chase, and one of the founders, Stuart Popejoy, was the lead for their emerging blockchain group. If they can deliver on the scalability and security piece, it will also be highly decentralized as a proof of work, which means it has the potential path towards being a TradFi on ramp, especially here in the US where there's higher regulations, and that could also apply to a few other nations. However, keep in mind, one thing that was brought up, and again, this isn't meant to be FUD, just reality, right? If you're a Cato holder, you get this. Um, 
but there was some talk about how is Kadena mooning without any ecosystem or dApps. And, you know, none of that is out there just yet. Um, simply the opportunity is for mining at the time being. And recently, you know, we saw Kadena go on just a tremendous run over the last 90 days, seeing around a 600% gain, getting them to cross the $1 billion mark. And so obviously um, some speculation happening because of the very high transaction claims that they've got um, in addition to the throughput, the team that they have. So Kadena has a lot of really positive things going for it if they're looking to kind of bridge the gap between traditional finance here in the US and blockchain. Now the tokenomics are somewhat similar to Hathor in the inflation sense. However, they do have a fixed supply of 1 billion tokens that are going to be mined over 120 years. So there was an update in January around these tokenomics. And so they updated it to reflect a little bit easier release schedule. So really what they did is they recalculated the emission rate or the number of tokens that come into existence. Originally, they had about 200 million tokens being released over a five-year period, and that was updated to be reflected to a 10-year period, reducing the speed to which the tokens will come to market. And that will help short-term price action for sure. Overall, the platform has 2 million pre-mined tokens. I'll find this for you here in the little paper. 200 pre-mined tokens that will release over the next nine years. In addition, to 700 million that will be mined and again that's over a very long period of time 120 years and 90 million that have already kind of been put out there for investors contributors and the strategic share now there was one damp that was slated for earlier this year that is still in testnet and that is cadena swap eventually of course this will be live and it'll be interesting to see what kind of fees they carry, the transaction finality, which will be very interesting with a proof of work project. As we know with Ethereum, if you're trying to trade on Uniswap or some of those other platforms, you do have to deal with bots that can front run your transaction. And so will there be you know, the opportunity to be able to pay more in fees to prevent any type of bot front running? Uh, transaction finality, I'm very interested to see how this will apply to Kadena Swap on a proof of work chain. And of course, where will liquidity be coming from? Um, so that, those are things that I'm very curious to see once Kadena Swap is live, if those have been solved for. Um, as we look at their roadmap, a lot happening here. With you know lending platform infrastructure getting built out, um, they've got a lot of new NFT projects in progress. Obviously, they're going to continue to building on their existing infrastructure to make sure that they can meet those high transaction throughputs. Um, and of course, infrastructure and bridging to other chains. And like any good project, they're going to have a ton of marketing coming forth, as well as their water wallets. So Ledger wallet support is going to be this quarter. Um, and of course, the web extension for the wallet. Overall, my personal opinion is Hathor has a little bit of work to do to find their identity and build a platform that provides more than just mining rewards. Kadena likely has some big investors that have come in. And again, they've got a great team. They're, they come from building blockchain projects in the traditional finance space. And my guess is those big investors are looking at the TPS potential, uh, the emission schedule change, uh, which will limit some of the tokens hitting the market. And, you know, there's always going to be mining pressure, sell pressure in an inflationary environment. Um, but again, extending those emissions out over more years will improve that, that impact to Kadena. Ultimately, it really comes down to ecosystem, the utility of the token, rewards, and the ease of use. Keep in mind today to participate in rewards, you have to be a miner of KDA or HTR, where with Glitch, you're gonna be able to stake to a validator and participate in the highly anticipated revenue share rewards program. So it can benefit less technical individuals who still wanna participate, earn rewards. Though I will credit Hathor, they have partnered with Anchor for one-click node deployment. 
to bridge that gap for less technical individuals. Now, additionally, I would say both Kadena and Hathor have had mainnet for about a year or more and have yet to deploy dApps. Glitch is poised to have the Glitch Exchange release with mainnet. As you can see here in the roadmap, they'll also have all of this audited by Kurtosis Tech. That's a big differentiator against both of these projects. Kurtosis Tech also completed stress testing for Avalanche or Ava Labs, Solana, Chainlink, and recently partnered with Near Protocol, which just flipped eGold in market cap. So there will be a decentralized exchange at the launch of Glitch Mainnet in addition to staking. Add in the wallet and browser extension set with the Glitch GRC standard, token wrapping, and the Mainnet bridge for cross-chain utility, you've got a lot of functionality day one with Mainnet. But that's not all. I want to share a little bit of insider info. Also plan on another three to five dApps being live right around Mainnet launch on the Glitch blockchain. To further that utility of the Glitch token, if you haven't seen some of my other videos around partnerships, go check them out. Every partner has to contribute to Glitch token utilization. And if you're onboarded as a partner, the revenue share program as well. So this provides that immediate value for Glitch token holders, which is so important when having to build an ecosystem from the very start. And if you look at the future roadmap for Glitch, the lending and NFT platform, stablecoin, privacy token, all of these things show a very bright and continuous build cycle for Glitch in the foreseeable future. Now, we always love to run these kind of programs to kind of see, hey, what's the market cap of? And so Glitch is just a 2x away from Hathor in market cap as it sits today. Glitch just went through another nice leg up. And 10x from Kadena, which just had a huge jump up. Again, that 600% that I was talking about earlier. Given the plans Glitch has for the end of the year, my personal opinion is Glitch will outpace Hathor in growth and could possibly equal Kada with a smooth mainnet launch in a working DEX. I think Kada will probably cool off for a bit after the big rise, so it may be an opportunity if you're a holder to rotate profits into another smaller cap project and kind of rinse and repeat here going into the end of the year. What are your thoughts and are there other projects you'd like me to compare? Leave those in the comments below. That's it for this episode. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about two other small chains that have been getting some attention recently. Keep in mind, this will always be a multi-chain universe. Glitch is laser focused on being purpose built for DeFi and trustless money markets. For anyone anywhere with no KYC, nominal fees so that any user, shrimp or whale can participate. And of course, ease of use to attract newcomers to the space to free themselves financially. Other chains will try to be jack of all trades, but I think the next few months will be so incredibly exciting with everything coming that it's worth considering Glitch in the near term. Thanks again for watching. Talk to you soon.